this is the 2018 to 19 um, solid mechanics exam uh, Eng 5443 um, and this is question one it's about a bar well one question one part a is about an aluminium bar with various forces applied to it so we'll start by sketching out the bar uh, it looks like this Um, and there are these forces and they're all horizontal forces and then there's going to be some reaction force at the wall um, I'll put it that way and call it PR and what we get is that PR plus P3, this is horizontal equilibrium, PR plus P3 equals P1 plus P2. Uh, so PR equals P1 plus P2 minus P3. Um, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is method of sections because each of these bits of the bar is going to experience a different stress. So let's do um, this was A, this is B, that's C and D surprisingly enough. So if I look at region AB um, and I make an imaginary cut in that um, this is now PAB the force in AB and PAB must equal PR and so we can say um, that equals um, P1 plus P2 minus P3 and the way that's marked on there is that is the tension that we've marked. Uh, let's go on and do BC. And we get PBC equals uh, PR minus P1. If you want, you could say PR forces to the left equals P1 plus PBC uh, and rearrange to get to that. Uh, so that equals P2 minus P3. And finally, in section CD, we get that PCD equals PR minus P1 minus P2 and that equals minus P3. So what we've got here is um, negative numbers are going to indicate compression. It's kind of easy to see. I think that section CD here is in compression. It's being squashed by this force P3. Negative numbers will be compression, positive numbers will be tension within that section. Um, so the next things that we're going to need are to think about stress and strain. Uh, let's just write out the equation. Stress is force over area. Strain is stress divided by Young's modulus. Um, stress is Young's modulus times strain so yeah that's okay um, so that equals F over AE and also strain is delta L divided by L and so we get Delta L is 
force times length divided by AE. Um, at this stage I might just do a check. Does this make sense? If the force goes up then the extension goes up, that makes sense. If the orig if it's longer in the first place then it extends more, that makes sense. If the area goes up it's harder to make it extend so it extends less and if the Young's modulus goes up it's stiffer so it extends less. So all of those things look, look to me like they're in the right place. Um, so then we can say okay uh, delta L total is delta L A B plus delta L B C plus sorry I should be clear with my deltas and my A's plus delta L C D. Uh, let's start a new page at that point. Uh, the last equation there that I wrote was delta L total equals delta L A B plus delta L B C plus delta L C D. And that equals F A B L A B over A E. A and E are constant for the whole bar, I think. So the lengths, yeah. So the lengths and the forces change, um, but A and E don't. Um, plus F B C L B C over A E plus F C D L C D over A E. And that equals, let's just get everything out algebraically as we want it, P1 plus P2 minus P3 all over AE plus um, P2 minus P3 all over AE. Uh, sorry, that should be times LAB and that's times LBC plus... Um, minus P3 LCD over AE. And now we can just put in numbers for that, I guess. That equals 7560 plus 5340 minus 5780 multiplied by 1.525 divided by um, Two hundred and fifty square millimeters is two hundred and fifty times ten to the minus six square meters, and Young's modulus is seventy two gigapascals. That's seventy two times ten to the nine plus. Um, P two minus P three is five three four zero minus five seven eight zero. Um, multiplied by LBC, that's 0 0.61 meters, and that's all divided by the same thing, 250 times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by 72 times 10 to the 9, plus negative 5780, multiplied by 0 0.916, divided by uh, 250 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 72 times 10 to the 9. And uh, now it's a bit of calculator work to get all of that through. Um, 7560 plus 5340 minus 5780 multiply all of that by 1.525 divide by 250 times 10 to the minus 6 divide by 72 times 10 to the 9 and I'm getting 6.03 times 10 to the minus 4. That's going to be in meters. I've been doing everything in units that are going to end up with SI units so that'll be in meters. The second part that comes out as minus 
times 10 to the minus 5. Uh, we agreed that minus is compression, so that middle bit is ever so slightly in compression. This is very much in tension. Um, and the last bit is probably going to end up negative as well, I would say, by observation. And that's 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4. That's all going to be in meters. And that equals... five point I'm getting an answer that's ten to the minus three that doesn't quite make sense I think I've done some calculator mistake there five point yeah better that comes out to be two point nine four times ten to the minus four meters that's 0 0.294 millimeters is the total change in length that I'm calculating there. Um, so that's part one done. Uh, I'll take another new sheet for part two. And part two says, what, how should we change P3 uh, so the bar doesn't change in length? If the bar doesn't change in length, then delta LT here equals zero and that means this whole thing here equals zero and actually what that really means is the top lines in this bit equal zero so I can say zero equals I'm just going to multiply through by a e uh, take this equation here set it equal to zero and multiply through by a e so I don't have to worry about a e in the calculation and I get p1 plus p2 minus p3 times l a b plus p2 minus p3 times l b c minus p3 times l c d equals um, minus p3 times the whole lot l a b plus l b c plus l c d plus p1 plus p uh, let's group my terms together p1 l a b plus p2 l a b plus l c d and therefore p3 equals p1 l a b plus p2 l a b plus l c d um, L A B plus L B C plus L C D. Rearranging all of that. And this is now a thing I can put numbers to. Um, that's 7560 times 0. Point, uh, sorry, times 1.525 plus 5340 times 1.525 plus 0.61 all divided by 1.525 plus 0.61 plus get that P3 then has to equal 7515.5 newtons for zero change in length. And that means the change in P3, the increase in P3 is 7515.5 minus whatever it was before, which is 5780, and that comes out to be one seven three six I'm rounding a bit one seven three six newtons uh, that's I think the change in 
P3 so that the bar doesn't change in length when the three loads are applied? Uh, that's a long old question for 10 marks. Uh, half a question, three sheets of paper, but I think that's approximately how it goes. Um, okay, let's have a look at part B, which looks like this. Um, if you think this question looks familiar, I think it turned up in the lecture slides for this uh, module. So that's perhaps going to be useful. Um, so what have we got? We've got some kind of loading like this on top of three columns, one of which is aluminium and the other two are steel, and it's a distributed load across the whole lot, something like that. 150 kilonewtons per meter. This length here we know is 0.6 meters. So the total load is 150,000 times 0.6 is 90,000 newtons, 90 kilonewtons. Um, there's all kinds of information in the question. Uh, let's just get that down on the page now. Um, Cross-sectional areas are all the same, and that's 1,250 square millimetres. Oh, sorry, that's for steel, and that is um, 1,250 times 10 to the minus 6 square metres. Remember that conversion from square millimetres to square metres. Uh, aluminium, we've got... 2850 square millimeters and that's 2850 times 10 to the minus 6 square meters um, determine the normal stress developed in each post if the bar so we've got the bar there's also a temperature change delta T equals 60 degrees Celsius or 60 Kelvin Young's modulus for steel is 200 gigapascals. Young's modulus for aluminium is 70 gigapascals. And we've got expansion coefficients. Alpha for steel is 12 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. And alpha for aluminium is 24 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the information in the question. There's uh, a fair amount going on there, isn't there? Um, the, whenever we've got these situations where um, we've got multiple materials all deforming together, what we need to do is think about two things. The first is a um, compatibility condition and that means the strain in the steel equals the strain in the aluminium. The whole thing, this bar on top is flat and the ground I guess which I haven't marked here is flat and so however much the steel gets compressed by the aluminium gets compressed by the same amount. Alternatively, I guess we could say delta L for the steel equals delta L for the aluminium. That's the same thing because their initial lengths are the same. Interestingly, we don't get told their lengths in the question. So maybe we'll only be able to use one of these because we'd need the lengths to convert between. Anyway, we'll come back and think about that in a bit. The second thing that we know is the equilibrium condition. And that says that the um, load supported by the aluminium plus the load supported by the steel plus the load supported by the other bit of the steel, all of that has to be 90 kilonewtons, the total load supported. These three things are supporting 90 kilonewtons, so when we add up the force in each of them, we're going to get 90 kilonewtons. 
Um, that sounds good. The uh, let's start with the compatibility condition because also the strain is made up of thermal strain plus mechanical strain. In each case, we've got a temperature change and some coefficients of um, uh, thermal expansion. And we've also got the fact that they're being squashed, so they're going to have some stress in them and that's going to relate to a strain as well. Uh, so that thermal strain plus the mechanical strain in the steel equals the thermal strain plus the mechanical strain in the aluminium. And that means alpha steel delta T, that's the thermal strain in the steel, plus sigma steel over E steel, that's um, using sigma equals E epsilon, so therefore epsilon equals sigma over E, equals alpha aluminium delta T plus sigma aluminium over E aluminium. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The next thing I'm going to want to do, just try and bring this down so it's in shot a bit. Um, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is um, relate sigma to force. Um, stress is force over area. So therefore we can say um, alpha s delta t plus force in the steel divided by area in the steel, etc. So I've substituted from this equation here, I've substituted sigma equals force over area. That's all I'm doing. Equals alpha in the aluminium delta t plus force in the aluminium divided by area of aluminium Young's modulus for aluminium. Now I can go back and just look at my equilibrium condition and rearrange that. I had Fa plus Fs plus Fs equals 90,000, which means that Fa equals 90,000 minus 2Fs. Let's put that in here. Um, this obviously has you know, lots of different things in it. All I've done to get from this line to this line is substitute in for Fa being 90,000 minus 2Fs. The good news is there's only one unknown left in here, Fs. I know everything else in this equation. So I'm going to start putting in some numbers. Uh, this is uh, alpha S. I'm, I'm not going to read these out as I write them. Uh, they all come from the things I wrote in red at the start of the question. Uh, 24 times 10 to the minus 6 times 60 plus 90,000 over 2850 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, EA is 70 times 10 to the 9 minus 2FS over the same thing. So now we're going to get pretty, everything's suddenly going to become clearer, I think, when I write this out. 12 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 60, 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 plus 
So I'm getting 4 times 10 to the minus 9 Fs there. Uh, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 4.51 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 1 times 10 to the minus 8 Fs. And finally, uh, I can rearrange everything there, I think, and I'll get, uh, if I bring all my Fs's to one side, I'll get 4 times 10 to the minus 9 plus 1 times 10 to the minus 8 Fs equals 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 4.51 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. And if I've got my signs the right way round, which I hope I have, I finally get to Fs equals... Eight three six four two kilonewtons. Um, <laughs> now I have to go back and look at what the question actually asked me. The first thing is, uh, sorry, I'll move this up so you can see the calculations. It's gone a bit out of shot. Um, the first thing to note is this isn't an unfeasible number. The total. Ah, it is a slightly unfeasible number because it suggests that the total force in the steel... Oh well, um, I guess it is what it is. At this stage I'm going to keep on going, assuming I'm right. What I'm finding here is that the, the aluminium is going to be in tension, I guess. Um, I just need to, to think about this at the end, but let's keep on going. This isn't a good time to, to stop and second guess things. Um, the last bits to do, um, the stress in the steel is force over area, which is going to be 83642 divided by uh, the area of the steel, we know that's one of the things I wrote in red. That's um, 1250 times 10 to the minus 6. Which comes out as 66.9 megapascals on my calculator. Um, then we go back to our equilibrium condition, Fa plus 2Fs equals um, uh, 90,000. And Fa, the force in the aluminium, is 90,000 minus 2Fs. And if Fs is 83642... That comes out to be minus 77,284 newtons. And that would mean the stress in the aluminium is um, that number divided by the area of the aluminium, which is 2850 times 10 to the minus 6. which comes out to be 27.1 
megapascals. Um, okay, so those are my final two answers. Uh, it's possible that at some stage in the question I've made uh, an algebraic mistake. Um, it's possible I haven't. What we're saying here is the steel is in compression. Uh, that means there's a force pushing up from the steel, which uh, is why it's opposed to this 90 kilonewtons pushing down. But we're also saying that the aluminium actually turns out to be in tension. That's what will happen if the... Um, Because the aluminium, hmm, this doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, the aluminium should be expanding more than the steel. It expands twice as fast as the steel, so it should be getting crushed um, or compressed to hold it in line with the steel. So its compression should be higher than the steel's. So I suspect there's an algebra mistake somewhere in what I've done. Um, I'm reasonably happy I'd get most of the marks for that. And I'll have a look and see if I can find the uh, problem with the algebra. OK, I, I had a look. I think um, my problem is this is fine, uh, this line here in the working, um, but this is a a positive strain it's a stretching of the item which means this because I'm, these are both positive in fact every value here is positive I need to use positive is stretching positive is uh, lengthening and that means that the force that, that lengthens something is tensile so here uh, I should have instead of having all of these as compressive forces I should have listed them as tensile forces and then I think what would happen well let's just try that uh, it's not going to change very much um, but let's just try improving this and getting it right um, if instead of listing those as compressive forces pushing up I list them as tensile forces pulling down then all the forces are acting downwards and I get 90,000 plus FA plus 2FS equal sorry yeah equals zero all the forces acting downwards equal all the forces acting upwards and there are no forces acting upwards and that's going to give me FA equals um, minus 90,000 minus 2fs so it's only a slight difference but that means uh, this equation here which I'm going to put an asterisk next to now um, changes because uh, this sign here should be a minus and then we end up with something that looks like this from the asterisk we get 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 plus 4 times 10 to the minus 9 fs equals 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 4.51 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 1 times 10 to the minus 8 fs and fs is going to be um, 1.44 times 10 to the minus 3 minus 4.51 times 10 to the minus 4 minus 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 all over 4 times 10 to the minus 9 plus 1 times 10 to the minus 8 and that equals let's try this now Nineteen thousand two hundred and fourteen newtons. Um, I 
that would mean sigma s equals um, Fifteen point four megapascals. I think these are now the right answers because what we're going to see is F A equals huh, minus ninety thousand minus two F S. Well, this doesn't quite make sense either because that's going to give us. A very weird number, very large negative number for FA. So getting these forces the right way round is um, is tricky. I guess what should be happening somehow. I, I think. The, the correct answer is going to be that FA equals 90,000 minus 2FS here. This is what I feel comfortable with. Uh, 90 minus 2 times 1, 9, 2, 1, 4. And that's 5, 1, 5, 7, 2 um, newtons. And therefore, sigma in the stress in the aluminium is that force divided by the um, cross-sectional area and that comes out to be 18.1 megapascals and then everything would be in compression um, ah and I guess that's what we're saying is that this number here is a compression this number here is a compression and when we add up that compression and two times that compression, we get a balance of the 90,000. Um, so I should probably represent this as being negative in this equation and this as being negative in this equation. Um, there's a bit of a mess at the end there to get all my forces pointing in the right direction. I probably need to work on a more systematic way of organizing the directions. I think it's fair to say this is a slightly tricky question. Um, I'm about 80% confident that these are the right answers for the stress in the aluminium and the stress in the steel at the end. Um, so that was question one. That's taken 38 minutes. Um, so, you know, hard question. All right.